Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nicholas Burial, and today we're actually gonna cheat a little bit. So we're gonna skip the video for the in-depth series we're doing and instead um, talk a little bit about the new V-Ray update, update two specifically for V-Ray 5 that just came out earlier today. And one of the features I wanted to look at is the new V-Ray decal feature. So to use this new feature, which is pretty cool, you go to your uh, create menu, go into geometry, take the drop down list to V-Ray, and here you will find V-Ray decal. If you drag a, um, a gizmo, which is it basically is, you can see here, I can drag one out from top view, and you can see that it projects an image in the direction of the arrow within the space of the decal itself. So. If I were to tilt this a little bit and maybe make it a little bit smaller, you can basically see here and notice that I have a V-Ray IPR set on because if you're not using um, IPR at all, it won't work in your viewport. So you can't see the material being projected directly in your viewport. So you need to use either uh, your open your V-Ray VFB and use your interactive rendering or get your uh, viewport to V-Ray viewport IPR. Just switch that on. If you have um, like a V-Ray Sun activated or maybe an HDRI with a dome light from the from Cosmos uh, browser or something like that, you might need to adjust your uh, exposure controls. You can do that by creating a V-Ray camera and then that's at least that's how I do it. Go press eight on your keyboard to go to your environments and effects, go to exposure control, set it to, instead of no exposure, set it to V-Ray exposure control, and set the mode to from camera, and then point at the camera itself. Then your perspective will adopt the exposure controls of that camera in itself. So if I change my F number from uh, 12 to eight, you can see that my perspective view now also gets to get uh, to be more brighter or darker depending on which way you go on your exposure. So that's just a quick tip. So let's look at this decal thing. So we can enable it and disable it as we please. We can change the width, length and height of the decal itself. And if I pull up my material editor and create a new V-Ray material, and make it some obvious other color. Let's just make it a little bit reflective. Down the glossiness a little bit. It's way too much. Something like that. So we have basically red plastic or whatever. And we apply that to the decal itself. So the V-Ray decal as an object, you need to um, assign the material to the selection of that object. So this object now has this material on it, the decal basically. This means that we're now projecting a whole different material onto this decal. And within any object that hits or are within the boundaries of the V-Ray decal itself. So if, if I move this decal, that means I can project this onto multiple objects at the same time, but getting this specific material. That material obviously can have textures on them. It can have all sorts of things. One of the things we can also use this for is well, we can use the fade out ability here. And if we fade out by an angle, uh, we can basically choose how to fade our material. So we don't get the border uh, as we did before on the decal itself. So we're blending it more easily in. Um, and then, and thus, you know, hiding the, the, uh, the borders a little bit of the box itself. So that's, uh, that's one way of doing it. Uh, there are some quirks. Sometimes I've seen that if you use fade out and then take it off again, uh, it, it gets a little bit more uh, weird. But I think I, I accidentally changed my normal angle from 90. So, all right. So it seems to work fine. One of the really cool things I think is the ability to use a mask. So if I were to go into my material editor go to maps, V-Ray, and choose a V-Ray bitmap. I've gotten this V-Ray splatter, or no, sorry, not V-Ray splatter, just paint splatter. So this paint splatter, if I put that on as a map, see it is inverted right now. So I need to invert the colors. I can do that 
fairly easily in the output. Just invert it. So white becomes where the paint will go and black will be also where the material will go and black will hide the border itself. So I can use this mask to my advantage. So basically, and the reason why I chose paint splatter, if I move my sphere closer to this wall, and someone we were to make like a blood splatter effect or a paintball splatter or something like that, um, we can actually make sure that we project the same splatter onto both objects at the same time. Um, because it's a projection on whatever, as long as the box hits it, we can hide our view and then, you know, with, with a good view, we can easily make you know, decals like uh, stickers or paint splatter like we have here um, and make that really easy to comply over to other materials and over to other objects so it just projects as we would want it to probably. Um, and yeah, so if you think about it, the Sonus uh, tutorial, if you've seen that one on my channel, if you haven't, go check it out, it's pretty cool. Um, I ended up using a lot of uh, UVW map modifiers on the object itself to create all the different map channels for uh, the buttons on top and all of this, and the logo in the front as well. Now, with V-Ray Decal, I could basically go back and choose the materials for the button texture and for the uh, logo and all of that, and just put them on as decals if I wanted to instead. And I could easily move them around and so on. I can hide and unhide them or whatever I would want to, which is actually pretty cool. Um, there's also an exclude and include button. So if I need to have the decal to basically have the size so it in theory touches more than one object, but I don't only want to affect this, the sphere itself, I can say that it needs to include and then only the sphere and press OK. So now only the sphere itself gets affected by this V-Ray uh, decal. I can also do the opposite and exclude everything except for the sphere, but that depends on what you need. So that's pretty easy to, um, to fix that way around. Um, lastly, I haven't tried this, but I'm pretty sure that if I do a copy of this specifically and I create a different material in a different color, uh, let's just take the same, but make it maybe green. And I apply this to the other decal, then order should be a way of prioritizing which gets to be on top and which doesn't. So we have two decals on top of each other. One is red and one is green. But right now, you know, they're both in order zero. So the higher the number, the the higher in the hier hier uh, hierarchy it will be. So um, you're basically taking it to the front or to the back, depending on the order. So if I set the red to order two, since the green is order one, then the red will be in front and vice versa. So we can use this as our um, way of, you know, stacking decals on top of each other, do more and more elaborate things while still having the ability to actually change them around. We can move them and make them, you know, interact in cool different ways. So yeah, I just figured that this was a really cool little setup and I wanted to show it to you guys as quickly as possible because I really think that this is uh, highly usable in a lot of different fun situations. So I can't wait to see what you guys come up with if you try and use the V-Ray decal uh, option. And obviously some of you might always uh, already be a little bit familiar with something like this. Uh, if you've used um, Unreal Engine or something like that, they have uh, a decal option for putting on basically stickers. Uh, I've seen people use that for surface imperfections and all sorts of crazy things. And you can do the same thing here now, um, which is really neat. So yeah, I'll uh, definitely uh, recommend you guys checking it out and uh, try and, you know, have a have a go at it and uh, please do uh, comment on the on the video if you want to um, if you want to share some of the things that you come up with with uh, V-Ray decal and what kind of cool things so everyone can see it. it would be cool all right I think that's it for now so thank you bye.